What you're looking at right now is Southern California's first ever 3D printed home. And what's even better, this is the most affordable 3D printed house I've ever been inside. Welcome to the Solar Futures house. It's a 425 square foot 3D printed house located on the campus of Woodbury University in Burbank, California. What started as a student's group project to enter a design competition ended up turning into an actual home. So this house was originally conceived by a group of architecture students. So it was on their own decision to kind of enter into the Solar Decathlon, which is a competition that goes on every two years. They were the only entrants of the competition to enter with a 3D printed house, and the house did have the requirements of being net zero, which basically means when building this house, any carbon that is put into the atmosphere, they have to find a way to get that taken out. With the use of solar panels, special window placements, and the great insulation that you get from concrete, they were able to do that. And so the students won the design part in the Department of Energy gives some seed funding to the groups that win that. The total cost of the build was around $250,000, which is a lot considering it's not a very big house, but is a similar price to a prefab or custom build that you're gonna get in this area. Keep in mind, however, the cost does not include land, which in Los Angeles, you'd be hard pressed to find a buildable lot under a million dollars. But let me show you guys around the home. So while it is on the smaller side, it does live a lot bigger. It feels much bigger than 400 150 square feet when you're inside. This is thanks in part to the floor to ceiling sliders and windows that they've got all throughout. In the entrance, you've got the desk area. They've added a trundle bed, but you could definitely fit a queen or a king in here. It's an all open concept with a very functional kitchen that was donated by the local IKEA. IKEA really wanted to get involved. An engineering firm that did uh, 3D printing up in Northern California when they get involved, so they helped out with the technology. You'll also notice this big cart. It's actually a portable battery that's powering the house. Part of the competition, it had to be zero net energy. That was mm -hmm. sort of a mandate from the Department of Energy. So everything that you see powered in the house is generated by the solar panels. Put in more panels on the upper roof, it would be net positive, which means cool. we would then be giving electricity back to the school. Mm -hmm. So this was donated by DWP as a mobile generator. We call it Mobi. Mm -hmm. um, and so the solar is connected to it and it stores the, the, the energy uh, for use if you needed to use it. Heading into the hallway on the right, there's a utility closet where they've got all the sustainable features in the house. There's a system that recycles the shower water to the toilet. There's an efficient hot water heater, the solar panel inverters, and of course, the actual electrical panel. Electrics you see here, the, the solar inverters that are over there. So this is the bathroom. It is a semicircle. How cool is that? 3D printer can do all of these curvilinear forms very easily, mm -hmm. very seamlessly, it doesn't cost anything more to do these curves. So the bathroom is a little more bare bones. Of course, you could add tile in here, but I love that they've got windows in here to bring in some natural light, and it also doubles as a laundry room. So while it's not huge square footage wise, it's very livable. I could totally see myself living in something like this. In the past, when I've made videos about 3D printed homes, a lot of people are weirded out by the use of concrete. But you guys, concrete has been used on buildings for quite some time now. Think about parking garages. They're all concrete and they they seem to hold up pretty, pretty fine. Concrete is not a new material when it comes to building things. It's just new for residential buildings. One of the benefits of 3D printing a house is it's supposed to make the process faster. But in this case, the total time of the build was still 15 months. And that's everything from design to permitting to construction. And while that is a pretty long time, it's actually fast for LA. A lot of the time of that was the foundation work. It rains a, a bunch of times over the, the spring break that delayed construction, I think. I think this could have been done even quicker um, had it not been raining so much in LA. The actual walls only took three days to print. It also takes three days to set up and three days to take down. So nine days total to get these walls up. It's about 95% complete. Right now they just finished up with some of the insulation up top here mm -hmm. and the, the ceiling. That was just a couple days ago. So I know people are gonna be shocked about the cost to build this. So I wanted to ask about this. I know with 3D printed houses, a lot of people expect it to be less 
expensive to build. And I know this <laughs> house isn't for sale, but did you guys find that the 3D printing saved money or was it about the same in this case? Right now, 3D printing is expensive yeah. because it's a new technology. So everything they're doing, they're doing almost for the first time. This is the first 3D printed building in Southern California. Every time this gets built, they'll figure out another aspect of it that reduces the cost. So yeah, it was expensive, but to be honest with you, like 150K isn't very expensive for a house in LA. No, so, yeah. that's incredibly um, inexpensive. Although it doesn't count the land, right. but <laughs> no land still probably. I think that is really good for the construction. I compared it to some other prefabs that you can get in LA and the price per square foot was a little bit higher for the 3D printed house, but it is a similar cost. So really because the technology is so expensive, it's kind of a wash at this point, but in years to come, it should be a lot less expensive. You know, it's similar to a computers. In 1975, it was almost $9,000 for this computer. And today you can get a Chromebook for like 400 bucks. So eventually 3D printed houses will probably be less expensive, but we're not quite there yet. But if you can imagine like in the future when, um, when they do have this figured out, this can be multiplied. That's mm -hmm. the whole point of 3D printing is that you can do several of these. And this kind of soft design is really meant so that you could do an opposite one on the other side. And so it would form a little courtyard. And this courtyard idea is actually very similar to bungalow courts, which were a really popular style of house in the early 1900s in Los Angeles. People loved these and they're pretty rare to find now because they're kind of inefficient with the space. But with the 3D printed houses, you could stack these and get a lot more livable square feet. They also planned it so that you could double stack these at some point. You could have a two floor house that's 3D printed. And actually in Germany, they've already started doing this. They have two story 3D printed houses. Okay, but if these aren't cheaper, why even bother building a 3D printed house? You know, it seems like a lot of work. I think one reason is because these are a lot more resilient to natural disasters. So in terms of fire, yes, concrete is works very well against fires. Uh, in terms of the, the earthquake, which is a big issue in California, mm -hmm. right? So a lot of that kind of earthquake issues goes into the foundation. And then outside of that, if you step outside, you can see some of the rebar that goes in through the concrete. So it's not just concrete that's set down, it's concrete with these rebar that go through through the whole wall in, in increments. Concrete is also very mold resistant. So in the case of flooding, it's gonna hold up a lot better than drywall. In general, these things hold up way better in natural disasters. There's even been a 3D printed house that's withstood an earthquake. This is actually a huge deal because in California and Florida, home insurance is getting so expensive that some of these companies are pulling out completely. You can't even get home insurance. It's just too expensive to pay for the damages of the wildfires and in Florida, the hurricanes, the flooding. Stick built houses just don't don't make sense in these places anymore. We need something more durable that can withstand an earthquake, a fire, things like that. I actually found online this guy who built a concrete house. It wasn't 3D printed, but he built this concrete house and it withstood a fire. Concrete obviously is more durable than wood when it comes to a fire and really everything. And they also insulate better so the heat doesn't get in, they're more energy efficient. There's really just one con that I can think of and that is if you wanted to renovate. I mean, knocking down a regular wall just made of drywall is hard enough. Imagine a concrete wall. I would not want to do that job. So it would probably be more expensive, messier, just more difficult. So you would just really want to be sure of your floor plan. So this house being on a college campus is not for sale. So I was really curious to know what they were planning on doing with the house now. We've been throwing around a lot of ideas. One of the ideas that the students made this house for was to address housing insecurity. This may be a situation where um, a housing insecure student occupies the, the space. It's a very luxurious space for, for a student. Oh. Um, so that's an option for us. We're also thinking about maybe visiting faculty uh, to do an artist or architect in residence. So it'd be great to invite uh, different people from other areas of the world who are on the cutting edge of 3D printing technology and have them stay for a semester and maybe teach a class. Yeah, that'd be very cool. So that is LA's first 3D printed house. It's pretty cool to see what they've done on a budget. And I think it'll be interesting to see how this technology advances. Comment down below what you guys think of the house. Would you live in one? Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.